run like I don't got an estate yeah. I went from LA to the A On the run, you can tell where I stay at. So let's rewind three years back. I get a phone call from Justin Bieber. He's like, Ryan, I just texted you this video of this car that's just amazing. I look at it, I'm like, wow, I mean, this is, this is a prototype Rolls Royce. Like, what is it? He's like, we need to buy it. So I called up a couple friends that I have at Rolls Royce and I'm like, What's, what is this car? Does it exist? Is it real? My client wants to buy it. And they're like, look, it was a design exercise and it was, it's a prototype. It isn't really a drivable car. And to me, I'm like, great. Now I gotta go back and I gotta tell Justin, we can't buy it, but maybe we could build something. You know, maybe we build something like it, but actually make it a drivable car that you can get in and drive, but it'll look like it's from the future. I sat with Musa and you know, we really took a look at that car and looked at all the design cues on it and was like, let's start with a Wraith because a Wraith is a good platform and let's, let's build our own version, almost like a reimagination of what this car would look like. Once we really started getting the shape together from shortening the car eight inches, widening it 12 and just giving it these new futuristic style points. One of the ones that really stands out the best to me is, is of course the wheel covers, because I think the wheel covers makes this car look like it's floating when it's driving. When you think futuristic and you think of like, what is what would Rolls Royce build 25 years from now? You know, we're hoping it's something like this car. You don't wanna take away the greatness that Rolls Royce is. We wanna add our touches to it so they look at this car and they, they're like, man, they did a good job with it. You know, and I, I think that's important. That's important when it comes to like our brand and who we are and the vehicles that we build. And of course, our customer first. And it's, you kind of, you kind of you're, you're living that world where it's a tough balance. But I think ultimately once that design was finished and we looked at it, we're like, this is it. This is what it is. And we started building it. So I scanned the passenger side of the vehicle, complete exterior, uh, and then I mirrored it. Um, and I meshed it to the driver's side. So now I have the complete, the complete exterior body with all the panels assembled. And then I just finished scanning with the body panels removed. So I'll do the same thing for, the, for these pieces. I'll mirror it to the driver's side and I have a couple of points over there that I'll, that I'll mesh up with and, and make sure everything meshes together nicely. So from here with the exterior scan, uh, I'll, I'll hand this off to uh, the guys over here at West Coast and they'll give it to their designer and then they can start uh, meshing uh, whatever their rendering is in with this. So they can essentially design off of this data. Once the scan data is done, it's time to start building the actual body pieces. So we'll take the scan data, and then from the scan data, it goes to our 3D modeler. Once the 3D modeler has everything modeled out, then the first pieces are cut, which become our molds. We'll pull out the molds, we'll get the part, and then we test fit the part, and we modify the part and attach the part to the vehicle to make sure the fitment and everything is perfect. Once that long process is done, and, and, and as I say it, it's like, oh, it sounds easy, but it's like, those were months of fitting, fitment, trimming, making brackets that don't exist, you know, cutting the car up, and then still thinking in your mind, you gotta make all these pieces still work and all these computers still talk to each other. So those were all those challenges that, that people didn't see behind the scenes, you know? And it's, it's like, once you get that done and that body is mounted onto that car, then it goes into the body shop. You know, they have months and months and hundreds and hundreds of hours of just body work in this car to get the shape and the lines perfect. So we picked the, the two-tone color, which was a gloss silver and then a matte gray to kind of give it that, you know, we didn't want to over highlight this car. We wanted it to just be tasteful.
paint is finished, now it's final assembly. But when you're doing a final assembly on a car that you've basically cut up and made your own, there's, there's challenges that you know, we had to face. Computers not talking to each other, sensors that aren't there anymore that we had to remove and relocate. That's those, those challenges that the guys in the shop love because you know, this is something we, they've never done before, so we gotta figure it out. Okay, so right now, the factory has LED lights and we're trying to tie into the LED light circuit and add our own LED lights. That ultimately makes who we are. West Coast Customs is always pushing that envelope of doing stuff that doesn't exist. And I think this is a perfect example of that. The interior was something, you know, when we looked at it, the Rolls-Royce interior is already amazing. So what more can we do to enhance it to just make it match this car? We started with doing the two-tone leather so it matched the exterior. We added a bunch of highlights from the, the speaker box in the trunk to the amp rack to the custom door panel pieces that we made. There was just a lot of intricate little touches that I think really gives this car that, that, that special feeling when you open the door, you're like, oh, this is a Rolls Royce, but it's a little bit different. And then of course, build the amazing sound system. For a client like this, is it's gotta sound like he's in the studio. If he's playing one of his new records, he wants to hear what it would sound like in the studio. And that's what we built him. You know, we, we built this amazing system in it from JL Audio, from all their components. And then it was like, that's the final piece. Three years in the making and we're almost there. This thing is insane. It's probably the biggest project I've ever been a part of, at least in the automotive world. I'm doing the final finishing touches right now. I've been driving this thing at four in the morning so nobody can see it. It's still dark out, nobody's snapping pictures. Some of the things that we're finishing up at this point are the audio. We just fine tuned all the, the audio and the amplifiers and the DSP. It sounds amazing. We have to top off the coolant, bleed the radiator so there's no bubbles or air in the system. Need to add a little bit of uh, windshield washer fluid to the, the, the reservoir. Little stuff, man, like we're right at the end. So get these things crossed off the list, drive it one last time and get it out of here. I present to you the Uriel. What we accomplished with this car was this one ultimately gives you, it makes you think like, how is it driving? How does it turn? Is it floating? Is it hovering? You know, and you see the internet now of like people asking all these questions. And I think it's just, you know, we got everybody's attention. We're still here. We're building amazing cars. And this is just the beginning of what we're getting into. Wow. <laughs> What the, what, oh my God, what, what, oh my goodness, <laughs> what? Three years, Jay, three years. This is our dream, right? You're gonna make me cry. You happy?
when we talk about game changing, this is it. Like it looks, when it's driving, it looks like it's floating. People like have to triple take because you, when you don't see wheels turning, you don't know what to think. This is a nighttime car. Like you drive this at night, people are gonna think it's a spaceship <laughs> driving down the street. The audio in this, just like you like it, just like the studio, you can play anything in here and it's... Wow. 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 This guy, yeah. Amplifiers and all built in, built in DSPs, time alignment, <laughs> the whole deal. And it sounds incredible. You have to play it for them because yeah. the sound is not even anything you would expect to ever hear out of a car. You crank it all the way up to 100%. It's not going to distort, it's not going to blow any speakers. It's just get in and enjoy it. Have fun. Dude, the wheel cover is so sweet. So sick. I want to take it for a drive.